there. My name is Keisha Spivey, and my husband and I, Eric, are celebrating 23 years of holy matrimony this year. And I wish I could tell you it's been perfect and it's been peachy king the whole time, but it has not. And so we decided to get together and put a list together of the things that we've done wrong, marriage mistakes that we've made. We felt what better way to be a blessing to other people than to help them learn from our mistakes. Yeah, you're going to make your own mistakes, but some of them you should not have to make if you could have just learned. So we put the list together. My husband is not necessarily one who wants to be before the camera. So we're just going to start off this series with a lot of the mistakes that I made. But this first one is that we both failed at immensely going into our marriage. And that first mistake is that number one, we were two halves coming together in an effort to become one instead of two holes who became one. And that way we would have won, W-O-N. When you are two holes coming together, you win. Two halves, it's just fragmented people trying to make a hole out of missing pieces and missing parts, and it's difficult. Can you recover from it? Absolutely. We're 23 years on the other side of it. You know, we dated for five years before we got married, so we were best friends going into this thing, and quitting wasn't really an option, so we worked our way through it, but we had to learn how to be whole individuals after we got married instead of coming into the marriage whole. And I had some issues, he had some issues, and we knew how to be each other's spouse before we knew how to be a whole man and before we knew how to be a whole woman. I knew how to be somebody's mother before I knew how to be a whole woman. He knew how to be somebody's daddy before he was a whole man. And so we went at this thing backwards. What I wish we would have done is taken the time to really, really get premarital counseling. We had one marriage counseling session before we got married. And it was interesting, it was fun, and it was a check off the list, but it did not prepare us. You know, I encourage couples that I'm marrying that they need to go through five to six months of premarital counseling to make sure that they're ready. And during that time, you need to hit the hot topics. You need to hit the things that nobody wants to talk about. You need to talk about the things that you're keeping secret. You need to talk about your weaknesses. You need to talk about your daddy issues, your mama issues. You need to talk about wrong concepts and things that you have regarding money. You need to talk about previous relationships and how they ended, where you wounded, what happened from that thing. You know, once we got married, we had to go back and try to figure out how to unscramble eggs, which is something that you could not do. You can't do it. You can't unring a bell. But we had to literally sit down with one another before God and start figuring out how we became whole as individuals. How did we, with family, with children, with responsibilities, how do we get back to the place of becoming whole? And we believe that could have been avoided had we really got premarital counseling. You know, I talk to couples all the time who say they don't need that. But once you talk to them, their parents are divorced or they have single, you have a single mom. They never seen a healthy relationship. And so they got all these expectations of what marriage is supposed to be. And it's based off of TV. It's based off of opinions. They have no idea what God's design is for holy matrimony. And so they come in with all their issues, all their pain, all their weaknesses, and all their struggles. And here they are marrying somebody who's got all their issues, all their weaknesses, all their pains, and all their struggles. And they think they're going to make that work. You know, marriage is hard with the right person. Marriage is hard when it's God ordained because that becoming one flesh, I know everybody's excited about the hookup and getting to be one flesh, but that becoming one flesh is a process and it requires a lot of hard work and a lot of effort. And if you haven't talked about those things that can present themselves as problems after you've gotten married, if you haven't even begun to crack the nut, if you not even begin to open up those situations and deal with them, you know what? Love is blind, but marriage is an eye opener. So one of the things that we wish we would have done was that we would have gotten marriage counseling before we got married. We wish we would have sat down, been transparent with our stuff and our mess and allowed someone to help us get right thinking, godly thinking and a godly perspective on these things before we became a husband and wife. I wish we would have taken the time to talk through some issues and literally got before God as individuals so that we could have had some more personal healing and came into this thing with a place of wholeness. So marriage tip number one, two halves do not make a whole. Not when it comes to marriage. You need two wholes coming together, blending into one greater whole with one greater purpose, with one greater agenda, which is kingdom minded. So, you know, and two, think about it, two wrongs make hell. Two wrong halves make hell. So if you want to do this thing and get a 
good start, a running start, launch into a good marriage. You know, we're 23 years in on marriage, five years of dating. So we've almost spent 30 years of our life together and we're looking forward to the next 30 and all that God will give us. But I just want to challenge you, if you've not got married yet, get premarital counseling. Not one session of a hit and miss, but time to dig a little bit deeper to discover some of the things that could present themselves as problems after you become one. So God bless you. And I'll see you on next week for another dose of a Marriage Monday. Have a blessed day.